beautiful place. Ah, oh, the way it sings of solitude. No, just look at her. Walking around the enemy's lair, enjoying the scenery. You're a crazy goat. How do you even survive without me? Canera, how... How can both of us be here? Is this a dream? I don't know. Wait. What's that noise? That is not far. And snow. Do you like snow? Oh, what am I thinking? Of course, you'll say snow is impractical. I'll even say I'm ready to listen to your poetic chatter for a while, once we escape from this beautiful but rather dangerous palace. Oh, look! It's all because of the house at the edge of time. At least, we think that's why. This place, it's like it's split and exists both here and there, today and yesterday. Even the mirrors here show delayed reflections. I was wandering here alone, passed through the mist, and Canera was standing on the other side. It's a good thing I thought of going through the same mist and caught up with this dreamer. I was right on time for the Soul Eater. It wasn't real, of course. Someone had unleashed an illusion on us. If we didn't know that you helped save us from that creepy fiend, we might have taken the bait. Yes, and the Forefather warned us about it. What's going to happen now? How about we put off these worries for later? It can wait until we escape the dominion of the insane Fey Queen. Wait, can I steal you for a minute? I might never get a chance, because we'll all die a painful death and so on, but I don't want to die without saying, you're the only priceless treasure in this world, one I'd never trade, even for immortality and power. Now we can go. We are ready for anything. Ready or not, but we can roast a few fey along the way. Lead on!
victory is certain. Is everything really, really over? And we are free? Free? What an interesting word. I think I've never even considered its meaning. You followed us here, foregoing your own interests, enduring a curse and an attack on your kingdom. This is impressive. Kenere is trying to say we are forever grateful. From now on, your grief is our grief and your foe is our foe. Not because we need a patron, but because no one is dearer to us than you. There is something else we need to discuss. Come on, you silly goat. Speak! No. Why now? I can't. I... Uh... You silly goat. Don't make me mad. We only just patched things up. If you don't say it, I will. No, fine, I'll say it. I've stopped myself from thinking about the future for so long that now I can barely find words. But I'm not afraid to admit it. You're more to me than just a friend or patron. And where's the poem? I was expecting a poetic declaration of love. Well, my precious friend, you once told Kalika you couldn't live without both of us. Now that devils and soul eaters aren't hunting us anymore, and we only need to defeat an overreaching Feylord, isn't it time we think about our future together? You see, Kalika, there was nothing to be afraid of. We are together, and we will do whatever it takes. There's nothing I'm afraid of now. And you shouldn't be either. Of course you're glad. What would you do without me? I can't tell what is to come. And this makes me uneasy. But my gut is telling me we can handle it. It turns out that it's not so easy to be the heroes of song and legend. But we can do it. I know it. I believe it. Just terribly silly things. I often do this to distract myself from trouble and worry. I daydream about complete nonsense. Just now, I was thinking how wonderful it would be to see the snow and make a snowman. I've never done anything like that before. This land can only have one ruler. We'll do whatever it takes to recover what's been taken from us and save this miserable land. I suggest we do not kneel. We are both cursed, you and I. But so what? The curse can harm you only as much as affliction touches your kingdom. But now, with the eldest wounded and bleeding, his henchmen all slain, I can return your state to the material plane. It will heal its wounds, and so will you. I'll create a bond between you and the First World, granting you immortality. Just as the Lantern King promises. What role in all this shall I play, Trespasser? The role of the vanquished. I know you will hardly accept a defeat, Eldest. You may try to attack us again, but we defeated you once. And we will do it again if we must. I'm ready to fight you forever if I have to. has run its course. It would be unwise to continue it. 
sides. I have no love of dying, return to life. My fellow elders are very good at playing especially intricate pranks at that exact moment. You were cursed by my will. By my will, you are now free from the curse. May shackles be broken, fetters be loosened. What's been stolen will be returned. What's been divided will be made whole again. I say farewell, and release your kingdom to the material plane. Hello? Be glad of your ordinary mortal life. Forget the gods of the first world. Now they no longer concern you. Now that the eldest and other spiteful beings wouldn't be bothering us, the king returned to his subjects and celebrated the victory and the end of the kingdom's miseries with great fanfare. Everything gradually returned to normal, including our exciting lives. Not always peaceful, but also not troubled by invasions from another world. And little by little, our heroes and the common folk began to forget the sorrows of the past. Sometimes, on clear spring nights, the king saw dreams. In them, the nymph Nyrissa, fierce and wounded, battled the Jabberwock, died, and returned to life, again, and again, and again. The kingdom built by our hero. It must be said that the king found a double happiness in his beloved twin tieflings. The three of them are rarely seen together because Kalika looks after her shelter for tiefling children, while Kanera busies herself with trade deals. And both sisters serve as patrons of a school of magic devoted to Nethys. But when the incredible trio do happen to be seen together, just looking at them makes everyone smile. And their common wedding was nothing short of spectacular. The magical fireworks at its finale were the stuff of history. And ever since, many brides and grooms across the neighboring lands have made it a habit to decorate their wedding hats with little horns. Despite all the woes that befell the country, our king remains a strong leader. Many noble houses from neighboring lands wouldn't hesitate to be related to him, and they regularly send a variety of marriage proposals. As for myself,